Okay, uh, hello everyone. My name's David from INN. With me is Dukesums from the base. How's it going, guys? And we've also got... Aaron Roberts from Cloud Imperium Games. Sorry, I'm just gonna point that yeah. a bit better. Um, I don't even know where to start. Thank, first off, thank you so much for, for taking some time and coming and talking to us. Um, sure, I'll, I'll start. Um, I actually have a, it has nothing to do with Star Citizen actually, but if you, when you and Chris were younger, do you guys ever get in fights? And like, if so, who would win? Uh, no, we all, yeah, we, we fought a lot when we were, lot, we were younger. So up until probably about the age of um, 16, 17, yeah. uh, we, we, we used to fight Chris a lot. But, but after that, we actually then, you know, started getting on really well. And um, I, you know, I don't know, it kind of, uh, you know, I think when I was, when I was a lot smaller, he used to win, but then when I got a little older, I used to win, so. <laughs> <laughs> Who's older? Chris is two years older than me. Okay. Um, well, that brings up, that brings up another point too, is that, you know, the fact that you guys are, you know, brothers, you know, did you guys envision always like, like part of what you guys wanted to do was make a game together? Was that always kind of, or I that mean, just kind of fate happened? Um, it kind of, I mean, when the early days, when we were still living in Manchester, um, Chris used to make a lot of games and I used to sort of help out a bit. Uh, but it really started, um, the first game um, I worked, you know, properly with Chris on that kind of stuff was, um, was Wing Commander, the original one. Mm -hmm. uh, and, uh, and then from then I worked on, you know, uh, Strike Commander. Um, and the privateer, um, and then and then um, and then and then after that, I then decided to move back to the UK and started doing. I did privateer two there, and and so forth and things. But we've worked together quite a lot, um, you know, because we, uh, you know, a lot of a lot of our you know skills complement each other because mm -hmm. Chris has obviously got a huge vision and passion to just really create something and really push the boundaries and that kind of side of things. And 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 and, uh, and so I work with him um, on, on a you know, and I spend a lot of time on, on sort of the production side mm -hmm. and then making sure that a lot of the vision he wants and so forth is you know basically working with the teams to make sure that that vision happens. Right. Well, I imagine the way games used to get made, right? I mean, if you think about Star Citizen Open Development Crowd funded, it's got to be a little freeing, right? Because you guys have all the creative control you have you know you don't have a you know bosses above you or you know companies that are influencing you so I imagine creatively speaking it's probably inspiring and it really feel, feels you right oh no yeah absolutely fantastic I mean we basically and also it's just more about you know creating it's basically making a dream project it's the ability just to go out and do something which no publisher would have allowed us to do you know right. I'm sure now publishers maybe say no you know there's obviously something here you know and stuff like that because people are prepared to to you know to really just back what we're mm -hmm. doing but yeah originally it was kind of like no one could do it and and it, and it, was, and it, was, a, it was a chance for me you know specifically to just basically you know, I felt I was getting older, and I thought I've got, you know, I've got one last big thing I want to do, and, and, and Star Citizen was it, and, and that's kind of what that, you know, brought me to want to, you know, work on the project with Chris. So, uh, I'm, I know you used to work a lot on, like, the Lego games and such, mm -hmm. right? Uh, how different is, you know, directing for Squadron 42 from... It's, um, it, it's, it's very different. So the Lego games were, um, you know, and, and I had uh, a lot of fun working on, on the Lego games and stuff and we're doing, we're doing that kind of stuff. But the Lego games were very much, um, you know, we knew what the technology was, um, you know, fundamentally. We did some projects. So one was Lego City Undercover, which... Um, like the process was in place already. Process was in place. The tech was in place. And that's a big, that's a huge deal. So if you know exactly what the technology is there and all you say is, well, we're going we're to create one or two new features and then we're going to we're going to then create a story around that using, you know, whether it's a license or something we create, we create ourselves and so forth. Then, um, then it's a very, then the process is very much just about making sure that we're, the content's being put in there. You're balancing it and you're playing it and so forth. And you can have a very, you know, um, it's much easier to predict. Right. As soon as you make something like, uh, which is kind of where, where, where the reason I joined, because you know it was it's a huge challenge. You make something like Star Citizen, and yes, you start with a really good engine like Crytek, but you know you then have to take what is basically an FPS engine and you've got to make it work so it's in 64 bits, so it's, you know, it's large world well, because you're making, these, you're making yeah. this huge universe, which, you know, obviously we showed at Gamescom, but we will show you even more tonight. <laughs> um, and, then, um, and, then, and then you've got that, but then also you've got to work on, like, you know, you've got to get local physics grids working because you've basically got this big world. You've got, you know, you've got basically levels within levels and ships flying around their own, in, in their own in their physics and stuff. And then, and, and so, and then, and then you get, and basically you have to get the streaming working away and right. so forth. And so all these technical challenges, challenges are basically the, the stuff we've been working on. And actually it's really nice because the fruition of all that is, is literally happening right now so we can actually get this stuff out to people to play. So we're gonna, we're gonna be seeing some of that tonight? You're gonna be seeing some of that tonight. I mean, we are, I, I know I was talking to Sandy about this. We, we're all just so excited, especially with the recent toxicity stuff. that's been on the internet. And we're just so excited for you guys to, to, 
to knock it out of the park and put some put those naysayers. Yeah, out. I mean, it's basically you know always you know it's like you know hate to you know say it, but you know if you build it, they will come, right? right. And, and at the end of the day, um, all. I want to do, and the people, and, and, and other guys here, and so forth. You're going to meet 130 really passionate individuals mm -hmm. from the UK. The UK office is the largest office in Cloud oh. Imperium Games, you know. And if you if you basically see these guys and the passion they have for this game and so forth, and the quality of what we're trying to do, and what we have to do is just get it out to people and just say, there's no point getting into discussions with people online or anything like that. That's pointless. Mm -hmm. What we have to do is just get the game out, and that'll speak for itself. Yeah. Um, so. You, you didn't start off as, uh, I guess right now your title is Director of World Ops? I am, like I'm basically running the, um, the global production, yes. So, but you didn't start with that. That was, no. so um, what, what was the shift like from how you started to no. Well, when I first joined, my responsibility was to get the UK office up and running. And I started with a really good base of people I worked for, for a long time. And then we built it there with then a bunch of um, cry guys who, who came from the Nottingham office um, when that sort of shut down and so forth. And so we have a really good base of people. And so I spent the first, because the office really only got going properly. Uh, and that was only with about 20 or 30 people was in um, February last year. I mean, sometimes it feels like, you know, Planet Prime has been going right. for a long while, but, uh, for, I mean, yes, it's been, you know, what, three years since the, since yeah. the money first came in, but mm -hmm. actually, you, to actually get the, uh, the company to the state it needs to be to actually create this stuff and get the technology in place is not something you just do like that. It, it takes time. You have, to build the, you have to build the office and so forth. And so my stuff for the last year has been uh, really just building up the UK office so we can support a bunch of this stuff and things. So Squadron 42, uh, you know, and other areas of the game. And, um, and, then, and then basically what happened once I kind of had the office running the way you know we wanted to and stuff like that, then there was stuff I wanted to basically take to the rest of the organization in terms of how we could produce stuff to make it you know more efficient uh, make uh, you know you know you know get different teams working on specific areas of the game so um, when you have people spread around the company that's fine you can do that but if if you have like um, two guys here two guys here three guys here four guys here in different yeah. studios and they're all working on the same thing that's not very effective right and of course we went to these different places to source the best talent. We have that over the company, but now one of the things I've been doing the last few months is working out well where does it make sense to develop certain aspects of the game. And so, so for instance, you know, we're consolidating the uh, you know a lot of the UI um, part of the game in the UK office. And actually, because of that, there's actually some guys from the US office who are coming over and going to mm -hmm. move to the UK and right. work there and so forth and things in, in, you know, from LA and stuff like that, that kind of stuff. And so, what we said to every studio is, what what is each studio strong at and what should they be working at? And then we make Thanks sure we focus on that and so you basically have the people together around the table who you know working together to do that kind of stuff yeah. and that's kind of what my drive has been over since I think it was around about May June I think I started doing that so, I've, so I did this and I've basically over the last few months been trying to put this in place so we have the right teams yeah. working on the right stuff and then that leads to the huge efficiency so basically we bring the game to everybody faster and so and then you have all the all the other producers you're you're the head of them so they all report to you they give Correct. you off the, yeah. the updates and everything to the office um so most of the time you're you're lo you're looking at it more from a macro scale, yeah. but generally, just like this, like Sandy was telling us, like you know she's the head of marketing, right? But she will go on and answer a customer service question, mm -hmm. you know, like so. It, it's do you stay on the macro scale? As far I mean, as I, do, I, mean I do. I do. I do. I mean, I'm you know I design and direct the games as well, right. so I love doing that. Mm -hmm. um, you know, um, so I do. Um, you know, lately I've been doing a bit more of the macro stuff, but I will absolutely, you know, I absolutely love getting down the trenches, going through the design documents, talking to people about, you know, what we can do and so forth, looking, you know, and that kind of stuff as well. So I do. Mm -hmm. I mean, I love making games, and so um, you know, I do the macro stuff because it needs to be done. But I also love spending time just, you know, doing the stuff, you know, looking at design, signing off and things like that, and so forth, mm -hmm. things on that sort of level as well. What are you most excited for people to to get a chance to see? I think for uh, well today, um, it's really to get a glimpse of um, of what Star Citizen is going to be, especially with the big the big world map. The, the, you know what we're showing you and what's going to happen there. It's basically going to have all the elements we said that being Star Citizen that, that you know in terms of you know you know multi crew, large world, um, EVA, ground based FPS. All in one thing, 
all, you know, um, all basically not loading between them and so forth and things like that. And that's the important thing. You basically have this dream of I can do go anywhere on ground, space, air, whatever. I can land. I can I can do this, the other. I can fight people for want to do and so forth. And we're gonna and we have it all working now in technology. So it's great. And that's what I'm looking forward to showing because that's for me is what everybody's been waiting for. Is like because there's a lot of people who say oh, it's too difficult that kind of stuff. And so I'm just gonna go. Well, here it is. And yeah. we want to get into everybody's hands just to say, look, this is it. And you can do it. Yes, it's hard work. Yes, it's taking time. But this is the dream we're aiming for. We're not trying to give you some knockoff wing commander or some whatever stuff like that. Second one is, is showing you a little, um, to give you a little bit of a, um, uh, a, a look into Squadron 42 as well. And, I, and it's been, I think you guys have done a pretty good job of keeping it hush hush. So, and I think, I, I personally, I don't want to be yeah. spoiled by the narrative or see too much. Cause I think, uh, okay. especially with like, you know, with Chris's background in producing uh, movies and everything, I'm sure it's going to be quite top notch, but I imagine you got some good, you got something special planned for us as far as forty two goes. So we're gonna have this is gonna be like a big big video that we're gonna see. We're gonna or? show we're gonna, we're, gonna, we're, gonna, we're gonna show a few things, but <laughs> no, I'm, I'm gonna keep it quiet. So, uh, like that, so. I tried. You tried. You tried. Um, um, another another question I have um, for you, Aaron, is obviously like with all, I, I think it's relevant, so I think it is important to talk about it. Um, but as far as you know the naysayers and what you hear every day, you know, like as backers, we, you know, if, if I, I scour every day online and look for any public article that gets written about Star Citizen, and usually what I do is I skip the article because then I brought this up with Sandy that um, generally most of the articles always get the information wrong for the most part. Mm -hmm. And then usually, so what I do personally is I actually just go straight to the comments and see what the people are saying. And then if I feel like it's being wrong information is being given, then I'll try to correct. And that's kind of, as a backer, that's me, you know, fighting the good fight, so to speak. Um, what do you think about the, the, the public health or the public perception so far? I mean, that? once again, people are going to have their opinions about stuff, and they're, and and, they're, and obviously people have a right to have an opinion about stuff right. like that. And it just goes back to all we can do is build this and show people the gameplay, and then you know people make up their minds from that. Mm -hmm. And that's what we're trying to get out there. And also, like I said, it's not just obviously we will show some stuff tonight, which is all going to be live and played live. Um, you know, um, just so I'm on record saying that because it's, everybody says, "Oh, it's recorded or something." Um, but I mean, um, uh, but it, but it's, uh, but then, and then the, the option then is just to get it out to everybody so everybody can play that. And I think when somebody gets into that and sees what it is, people are going to create their own scenarios. They're going to come up with their own game stuff and things like that. I think people are going to, you know, just live in just what we're going to give them. You know, um, you know, in the next few weeks, they're going to live in that, um, you know, thing and just and love that like, meeting with the friends, doing stuff, going to different places, exploring, um, taking missions, and all that kind of stuff and things. Well, that's the thing because you have all that tech, right? And that's and for the most part, so far in the development, it's all been you have to build all the groundwork, you got to get all the systems in place. So there's not a lot of flashy stuff you can show in the beginning. And I think we're uh, we're are we to the point of the project where now you can really just start focusing on the content side yep. and building on that foundation? Absolutely. We we you know the the big hard slug was getting the tech in place. Um, it's a huge amount of work, um, but now it's there, and so now we can show it, and, we can, and that means we can put a lot of stuff together and so forth. And, and we have, um, and, and, it, and, and also that the, the, the base tech being in there as well is the great, great foundation for obviously finishing off Squadron 42 as mm -hmm. well. And that's a level, because they're all very much in, you know, um, joined up. And, and, that, and that's been part of the criticism of Star Citizen was that you have all these oh. pieces together. Go ahead, sorry. Sorry, guys. It's, it's all good. good. You have, you have all this tech, right? So there's all these different pieces. You know, you have to have the general incident manager. You have to have the zoning. You have the local physics grids. You need to have the cameras. You know, you have all this new tech. You know, you can't cheat, for instance, just on the FPS, like Chris has mentioned. Um, and I think that's been one of the big things with, uh, with the criticism. Or not criticism, but... And it's okay. It's, a, it's good to have criticism, but um, I think seeing all those pieces, and it sounds like what we're going to see tonight, is... It's that's the verification. It's the clarification of the project and what it's going to be, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. No, I mean, I mean that 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 that's it. Put it together, um, show the stuff, and then also, like I said, then the important thing is put it in the hands of the players, mm -hmm. and then let everyone play it, and then basically get that feedback from the community because it's that it, it's the beautiful thing. Is we we get the stuff out there, we get the feedback, and then we can we can basically react to that and get the more stuff out. And then what we do then is is then we do another update where we then add a bunch more content, a bunch more gameplay, and so forth, and we just keep on building, 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 and then before people know it, all of a sudden. You know the actual whole position units was just crept, just crept up in everybody, and they've been playing, giving feedback, and getting that kind of stuff and things. And we used, and that's kind of the way we want to build it because right. it, it, the whole idea we wanted to create was this, and you know, open development 
is great in those sort of terms. You go and work for everybody, you do the stuff, you get the stuff out there, and you basically, you know, and then people can see it being built together and people can be part of the process. And that's what we love doing. The other side of open development is that people can sit there and go, oh, I don't like that, that's crap, what's going on here, you know, and that kind of right. stuff, things like that. And there's a lot of stuff because we are very open development that, you know, I think people don't realize happens in every games company. It just happens behind closed doors. But we're just basically saying we're sharing it with everybody. This is what we're doing. This is how we're doing it. You know, sometimes it takes longer than we want it to. We miss dates, absolutely, because we're trying to do something. We change, we change the scope of what we're trying to do because right. basically, you know, when we, we are, we're, we're basically, the game we were building when, you know, at the beginning, which was, you know, when there was $6 million, we're not going to basically deliver a $6 million game to people when they've given us $90 million. That would be insulting. It would be like, exactly. you know, I mean, it would be like, you know, well, okay, well, what did you do with the other, you know, I can imagine the comments would be, well, wait a second, we gave you $90 million, but one to the other $84 million. So and so, and so you know, and yeah. so like that. And so, it's, so, so, so we basically are, you know, we've been given the opportunity to create something really special, and that's what we are doing. That's what we're working towards. And, and, and that's, you know, and I'm just looking forward to getting that out to everybody so everybody goes, okay, I get it, you know. And there's a lot of people who understand the vision, and mm -hmm. there's a lot of people sitting on the fence who, you know, who I think are waiting to be given an opportunity to, to, to basically see it and go, yes, that's a great experience and so yeah. forth. So, I mean, the community does, I mean, you guys do a lot for the community. Everything that, that gets shown, I mean, we see more than any other game their fans ever get to see, pretty much, right? Um, what can we, the community, do for you guys? I mean, I think, you know, I, I don't, I don't, I, you're already doing it. I mean, basically, to be honest, the amount of support we've had from the community has been absolutely amazing. Um, you know, to get that kind of stuff. The amount of, um, you know, uh, and it's not just in terms of, you know, financial support. It's in terms of just, you know, people really sort of understanding, helping out, you know, um, going and giving us feedback, um, you, know, um, you know, basically creating, helping create a lot of the sort of fiction that's going on in the universe and all that kind of stuff. And that's what's absolutely fantastic about the whole thing is it's, it's basically, it feels like we're building it with like, you know, a million other people and really being part of that sort of stuff. And th 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 to be honest, I couldn't ask anymore because basically I think everybody who's seeing what's going on and is trying to build a dream with us and uh, you know it's, it's you know it's already that special already for me wonderful i, I like that I just a bit too, <laughs> <laughs> well i think he's got to steal you so cool. yeah okay thank you thank, thank you so, you so much, much. Yeah, for, thank you very much thank you that was cheers. great absolutely cheers